Let me read to you a passage from the 19th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 3 to 12. It's the Gospel for Friday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, Some Pharisees came to Jesus to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Have you not read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh? So they are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. <clears throat> Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it, it has been given. Some are celibate from birth, while some do not marry by force of circumstances. Still others choose not to marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. That's from Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 to 12. What does it suggest to us? Well, you know, there is much invisible creation that reflects the calling of man. For instance, man is called freely to give himself for the sake of others. His highest and noblest moments are when, for a truly worthy reason, he sacrifices his life for the sake of another. The voice of mankind agrees that love is man's true calling, and love is self-sacrificing. How is this reflected in the rest of visible creation? Well, do we not see everywhere a pattern of one thing being given up or taken for the sake of something else? The produce of the fields is eaten by various animals that they might live, and those animals themselves are preyed upon by other animals or man in order that those predators might live. Life and being is given up for the sake of the other, and this general law, observable in creation, is seen to reach its height in the good and noble man who freely spends himself for others. And this itself reflects the life of God who is love. For man, this natural vocation to self-sacrificing love is part of his natural yearning for communion with another the most common, though not exclusive, expression of which is marriage. The man and the woman give themselves to one another in a permanent union of love. And if this, if this flourishes by self-donation and self-sacrifice, it constitutes their greatest fulfilment in life. There is a nuptial character to the human soul, and this nuptial dimension is found to be stamped on all things. The animal kingdom is impelled towards a union that results in new life, and so too with all of life. We can, see, we can even see something of this imprint on non-sentient reality. It is clearly a reflection of a nuptial life of self-donation within God himself, revealed by Jesus Christ. From all eternity, the Father and the Son are united in an ineffable love in the Holy Spirit. Everywhere we see built into the structure of visible creation what we might call a reflection of the nuptial life of God the Creator. Nuptial and self-sacrificing love is the ultimate law of reality and is the route to a flourishing fulfillment. Man's dignity consists in recognizing this natural law and freely committing himself to living according to it. In the concrete, this means living according to the teaching of Christ. For by far the greater part of humanity, this calling to communion 
and self-donation is expressed in the communion of marriage. This is an irrevocable self-donation to the other, in which each has equal dignity. It is one-to-one, -one, absolute, irrevocable, unbreakable. It is a reflection of the nuptial life of God, in which the Father is forever the Son's possession, and the Son is forever the Father's possession, in so effable a union as to constitute the Divine Spirit. It is indissoluble. It is this which is reflected in the self-donation of Jesus Christ to his body, the Church. Christ loved us and gave himself for us, for us, his Church. It was a nuptial act on his part, and its expression is Calvary. And thus the Church became his spouse, and he the bridegroom. This bond between Christ and his Church is unbreakable, and is one to one. It reflects the life of the Most Holy Trinity, and every Christian marriage is called to reflect the nuptial bond between Christ and his Church, which itself reflects the nuptial bond within the Holy Trinity itself. Now how can this possibly be lived? It is so high an ideal. It can be lived by the power of grace, the grace of the Holy Spirit, who is given to the bride and the bridegroom in the sacrament of matrimony. The Divine Spirit, the Spirit of the Father and of the Son, is bestowed on the husband and wife and binds them in a union which reflects the union within the Holy Trinity. His grace thereafter throbs within the life of their love, building it up and shaping it in the likeness of the love of Christ for his church. And their calling as husband and wife is to reflect this love between Christ and his church and to be an instrument of its work in the world. Now, as our Lord says in our gospel, not all, of course, are called to the precise form of self-donation that is matrimony. Some choose to renounce it for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. They give themselves to Christ directly and immediately, and for love of Christ, they live out in an apostolic service, this self-donation. And thus they reflect the life of the Holy Trinity after the manner of Christ himself. Let us ponder the grandeur of the vision and calling outlined by Jesus Christ in the Gospel I read earlier. Our Lord holds out to the married couple the calling to live a life that reflects his love for his spouse, the Church, and also the inner life of the Holy Trinity. Our Lord even holds out a loftier ideal still, to set aside even marriage for the sake of the Kingdom of Heaven, which is to say, for the sake of Christ and a share in his mission. It is a higher form of communion and self-donation, one that reflects even more exactly the life of self-donation lived by Christ. So then, let us be up and doing.